Good morning, it's Lynn and welcome to another episode at Utopia Farms. So yesterday I videotaped some of our haying that was going on and um, I'm combining it uh, with the stuff I put on today so that's why there may be some confusion in the weather. Um, but I wanted to do a video today mainly on uh, the haying and harvesting of the hay and what we have, what's all involved. And uh, the other day it was scorching hot and we were supposed to get uh, four days in a row of sun. Well, we still have the really strong winds today, but it is so cold. Um, it's probably in the low 60s right now maybe colder with the wind like I'm back in my lined um, pants and sweatshirts and I'm still cold it's the weather is so unstable you totally cannot deny weather changes these days so um, today is the wedding that's why I wanted to get part of the video done yesterday and yesterday's video is not up yet it's still uploading because my internet speed is definitely not getting any better so that's all the updates let's uh, go into the farm and see what's happening today <laughs> So the sheep are way more friskier today because uh, of the cooler temperatures. First half of the barn has already left. Some of them are just staying at the trough. Are you heading back in already? We just let you out. We just let you out. cut the grass down the hay I should say and whenever farmers cut hay you will see um, seagulls flying around after and the seagulls are looking for anything dead or vulnerable that the uh, chopped hay has kind of brought to the surface for them. So they're looking for um, mice. They're looking for, um, we've had sometimes nests, like um, marsh hawks will nest in those fields and even ducks have nested in there and, and those seagulls are looking for eggs and anything that they can scavenge. Hopefully uh, in the next few days, especially with this wind, it will dry down and we will be still wrapping it because it will never dry down enough to make a dry bale because it's just not ready for that yet. But we will wrap it and it will give us some good first cut day. So for those of you who don't know about um, making hay, um, it's a process. It's not something that you cut, cut it down and then bale it the same day. Um, first of all, you have to cut it down like Ernie's doing right now. And then you'll come through this field before you bale it 
and you'll rake it up into rows. Sometimes you'll rake it up just so that the air will um, go through it more to help dry it down. And then once uh, it's dried down, then you'll come in with the baler and bale it up. And then if it's wet hay or damp hay, you're then gonna take that hay and wrap it in plastic. It's like saran wrap. So it's um, a multi-day process and that's why you need a window of heat and dry weather and sunshine and wind helps a lot too to help dry it down and um, give you time to do all those various steps that are involved in making hay. Usually you like to have at least four good days. Cutting the hay down is probably the quickest process. It's just uh, like mowing your lawn. So you can uh, go with a lot more speed than you can do for the raking and the bailing. Sorry about the wind noise, guys. I know it's going to be so severe. Arnie coming back. He's done. That field is finished. much wind today and we do have this rare opportunity of dry weather for the next few days we've decided that we're gonna take the adjoining pasture down too for hay um, while we have a chance we think we can get it all done in this window as long as uh, the forecast doesn't change so this one here is done it's all down and it looks like there's lots of hay in these fields. And he's working on this next field. This is the field that uh, goes back at the very back where he's turning back there. That's where our barley field is. And right over here, kind of between the two hay fields is where we planted our beans. And you can see, remember we chopped up all the corn stalks. So they are all nicely mulched up and will act as fertilizer and food for those plants that are growing. And all the little green stuff you see in the field here are all soybeans. And it looks like we got a really good catch on the ones that we did manage to get in. So that's good. I guess I'll walk back and look at the barley field while well, at least I have a path to walk back to look at the barley without uh, worrying about walking through the long grass and getting uh, covered in ticks. This, uh, the haying uh, will definitely depress the tick population. And this is the barley field. Barley looks like grass at this stage, but it's not. I'll climb over once the war goes by. I gotta watch the dogs. I just wanna make sure that dogs don't go near the hay, the hay mower. Come here, stay here. While he goes by, because these are brutal, uh, brutal blades. really good Benny you stayed because you don't want to get yelled at you're always a good dog and Katie's always a good dog too and Max 
you don't pay attention too much. Yeah, I just jumped over the fence into the barley field to see if uh, I can show you any heads on it. Um, I don't see a single weed. It's looking really good. Flag stage and it's where the leaf kind of goes off and looks like a flag. You can kind of see that here in the wind. There's no heads yet, but I think after the flag stage, the little heads start to come up. The heads are what have hold the um, barley seeds. So this, when we harvest it, will feed grain to our sheep. It'll be used in the creep mix as well. And all the stalks will be used for straw as bedding for the sheep. So every part of the barley plant will be used on our farm. And in the when it's harvest time, it all turns a golden color. And on a windy light day like today, when it's blowing, it's uh, it's a very beautiful sight. So uh, you'll have to stay tuned for our fall harvest and and watch how the barley progresses. It is a very, very beautiful crop to grow. But yeah, I'd say that she's a bumper crop and that windstorm and thunder didn't, uh, didn't knock it over at all. It looks really good. So I was at the hairdressers because today is my son's wedding. So we're, me and the bride-to-be, we're getting our hair done. And it looks like while I was away that Arnie decided to bail the first field. The other one's still down over there. But he must have thought that the hay dried enough for wrap baling. He's got all the hay bailed up. Still an extremely windy day today. And right now he's back there putting the hay on the wagons. And he'll take those wagons into the yard here and he'll wrap those probably tomorrow. Because uh, we have to get ready for the wedding, which we'll be leaving for in about an hour and a half. So, no rest for the wicked. We had a bunch of sheep here. Instead of going inside, they're hanging out by the lambs at the gate here. I don't know why they're doing that. Here comes some girls probably going out to pasture. Oh, no. They're probably going to go see why these guys are hanging over here. Max, they don't need help going there. Max, they can do it on their own. coming through right now and everything's looking nice and pretty and green at least. Just gonna put stack 
these uh, bales up in the yard ready for wrapping tomorrow and uh, then he can put the wagons away before he gets dressed up for the wedding. No suit, but we are going to be dressed up. This is me and Arnie getting ready to go to the wedding. <laughs> it's hard when you don't have someone to carry things for you. Yeah. I love you because you have done more than any creed could have done to make you good, and more than any faith could have done to make you happy. I've done it without touch, without a word, without a sign. You have done it by being yourself. Perhaps that's what being a friend means, after all. Now come to the expression of intent, and I have a few questions for you. Here we are at the reception. We're ready to go in now.